evening. <clears throat> My name is Melanie Moon, and I'm a first grade teacher. I've been teaching at the primary school for 16 years. In addition to first grade, I've also taught second grade for a number of years. Similarly to Jen, I've also taught, I've held a variety of leadership roles in school, such as grade level chair for 10 years, science curriculum liaison, and mathematics curriculum liaison. I'm a nationally board certified teacher, and I highly value education. In addition to teaching in the Ichabod Crane School District, I have three children in our schools, and my fourth will begin pre-K next year. So I do see education through the eyes of the students and the parents as well. The recent changes in education have been very difficult to take. Specifically, I'm referring to the Common Core state standards and the New York State testing. I will be honest, I've not been a fan of the Common Core state standards from the beginning, though I was never bold enough to say that publicly. My expertise is in relation to the primary and the elementary grades, and it's with those subject areas which I'm most familiar. But at first glance, it was my feeling that much of the Common Core standards were developmentally inappropriate. We were suddenly asking kindergarten and first grade students to identify author's purpose and to write with voice. How does a first grader write with voice? Do they have enough life experience to understand what that even means? In math, we're asking children to explain their answers in writing, yet they have not mastered the art of writing a complete sentence on a familiar topic. We're asking them to comprehend texts that are two and three and four grade levels beyond their reading abilities on topics with which they have little or no prior knowledge. But we are told if we just teach them to break that text apart, chunk it into smaller sections, they'll comprehend the text and respond to it in advanced ways. I think most of us have seen these discrepancies, but have remained silent so as to not be a naysayer or to make it look like we don't support our students or we don't want them to achieve higher goals. I strongly believe in high standards and I want every child to excel. I have seen firsthand when the bar is raised, children will rise to the occasion and they meet our expectations. But in this case, we've gone too far. The children are at a frustration level and even the basic understandings they should have are breaking down. With respect to the state tests, they're running our lives. There have been numerous occasions when we as teachers have sat at meetings discussing curriculum and student achievement. We ask ourselves, why are we doing this? And why are we putting that type of work in front of the kids when we know it's not appropriate? Or we'll say, why are we having the kids read this when we know it's too difficult for most of them? And unfortunately, our answer is often the same. Our answers sound like, well, when they take the state tests, they're going to have to sit with work way beyond their level, so we really need to get them ready for that. Or we'll say, yes, but they're going to be asked to do this on the state tests. For me, that's not a sound rationale on which, to on which to base entire reading and mathematics programs. We should be teaching the children based on proven best practices, child development theories that have existed for hundreds of years, and our professional training. We, as teachers, have been trained to teach, but that luxury seems to have been taken away. Everything is handed down to us, and we're told what, when, where, and how to teach it. And this is very difficult, because we know that much of what we're doing is not in the children's best interests. So I actually was likening this situation to the one that you, as board members, have recently had to deal with, with the veterans' tax exemption. And the governor asked you, um, put you on the spot, and required that you make a decision, and I feel be the scapegoat um, for whichever group of citizens becomes impacted in a negative way. Um, you know, public conversations are tricky. They're difficult to have because no one wants to look like they don't support veterans. Of course we do. But yet we know that there is an implication um, for other taxpayers. And I was glad to see you guys push back with the resolution that you adopted to let the governor know that you don't believe it's your role to make that type of a decision. And I feel like we have teachers, as teachers, have been in the same position. We don't approve of the changes being handed down from the state. They're being sold to the public as higher standards for students 
and teacher accountability. So if we speak out, it looks as though we don't want our students to excel or maybe we just don't want to work hard. And neither of those is true. We want our children to be the best they can be and we'll work incredibly hard to accomplish that. Unfortunately, while setting the teachers up to fail, the governor has caused the children to fail and they're the ones that are paying the price and I do feel that their education is suffering. I would love to just see us work together as a community and push back against some of these policies. I don't have all the answers on how to accomplish that, but I do believe that we have begun with the first step tonight to just publicly acknowledge the problem. Um, I'm sure you know the saying that you can't fix what you don't acknowledge. And so at least now that we've acknowledged this, I'd like to see what we can do to improve education at Ichabod Crane for our children. Thank you.